Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my Ancestry DNA results. It is a DNA company where you would send in a half a teaspoon of your saliva. They analyze it for your genetic makeup and also for your genetic cousins and other relatives. So if you are looking for biological relatives or if you would just like to know more about your personal heritage, I would strongly recommend Ancestry DNA for that purpose. Here are my results. Okay, at the top of the list, we have Cameroon, Congo, 33%. Extending through the heart of Africa is Cameroon, Congo, and the Western Bantu Peoples region. It winds throughout the tropical rainforest, the humid savanna, and a semi-arid desert, starting about 3,000 years ago. The Bantu-speaking people spread from an area around the border of modern-day Cameroon and Nigeria and through much of sub-Saharan Africa into one of the greatest migrations in human history. Today, the region is home to unrivaled ethnic and linguistic diversity. Nigeria, 25%. Nigeria region takes its name from the most populous country in Africa, where more than 168 million people live in an area about twice the size of California. In fact, Nigeria has six cities with populations over 1 million. The United States has nine. From its tropical south to the arid north, Nigeria as a country is a concept and product of colonialism, bringing together more than 250 ethnic groups within a fairly arbitrary border. I am 12% Benin and Togo. For years, anthropologists and others looked at African ethnic groups as being mostly solitary and static. However, historians now know that huge empires and kingdoms with administrations and armies, diplomatic corps, and distant trading partners have long been a part of Africa's fabric. This is especially true of West Africa, where migrations, conquests, and intermarriage within allied kingdoms Help explain why, for example, many people from our Benin and Togo region also have DNA that looks similar to our profile for Nigeria. I am 11% Ivory Coast and Ghana. Early French and Portuguese explorers identified sections of the West African coast by the area's resources, which is how the Ivory Coast got its name. Neighboring Ghana was known as the Gold Coast until it won independence from colonial rule in 1957 and renamed itself after medieval West African Empire. Today, more than 46 million people live in the two countries, which depend less on gold and ivory than they do chocolate. Ivory Coast and Ghana produce more than half of the world's cocoa. I am 10% Mali. Mali's modern boundaries were drawn in 1890 when French Sudan was created and united two very different regions, the Sudanian savannas in the south and the Sahara Desert to the north. These man-made borders make our Mali region a mix of diverse peoples, but geography has always played a key role in Mali's history and people. The savannas at the edge of the desert made the area a natural center for the trans-Saharan trade which connected Western Africa with Europe and Asia in pre-colonial times. For centuries, Mali was a fabled land of gold scholarship and empires. I'm 6% Scottish. With the center in the northern third of the island, the Great Britain, but stretching down to Brittany and France, our Scotland ethnicity region is known for its geographic beauty, medieval architecture, and folklore. Gaelic and Scots have influenced regional English dialects and are both still spoken in the same areas. National symbols include the lion rampart, clan tartans, and bagpipes are often recognized internationally alongside symbols of traditional cuisine like whiskey and haggis. I am 1% Native American. The diverse landscape of our indigenous America's north region spans from the Pacific Canadian coast to the northern Atlantic coastline. These lands were home to a vast array of Native American groups from the nomadic tribes of the plains to the more sedentary peoples in the northeast. Surviving by hunting, foraging, and agriculture, they also traded and formed relationships with the French, Spanish, and English travelers. Oral storytelling traditions help to sustain origin myths, such as the tale of the Iroquian sky people while changing to accommodate new Christian influences. 
While different in many ways, the people of this region all created societies rich in cultural adaptation. I am 1% French. Our France region is known for both the splendor of Paris and its picturesque countryside of plains and rolling hills, checkered with fields and hedgerows, evidence of human life in France, including the stunning galleries of the Stone Age paintings and Lascaux Cave, stretches back long before recorded history. Today's French are mostly urban dwellers and can trace their roots to several key groups who made their way into Le Hexagon starting about 2,500 years ago. I am 1% Southeast Asian. Our Southeast Asian region comprises of several countries from Myanmar to Indonesia. Characterized by extensive river systems, straits and seas, and thousands of islands, the region's waterways formed an ancient trade network between India and China and are culturally important to this day. This diverse region is home to hundreds of the world's languages and most people live either in major cities including Jakarta, Bangkok, and Singapore, or clustered around fertile river valleys, where cultivating rice, rubber trees, fruit, and other forms of agriculture are common. All right, other regions, additional communities include Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, African-American communities there, also early North Carolina, African-Americans, and mid-Atlantic coastal African-Americans. I hope you enjoyed this review of my ancestry DNA, and hopefully it encourages you to do yours as well. Take care.